Friends, we have discussed about the topo sheets. Now, this is a basic for us to start our activities. It means I have to start my other activities. Maybe I wish to use, take satellite image or aerial photographs I wish to take or some drone survey I have to do or ground penetrating radar. But where exactly I do? That gives me the topo sheet. Based on that, I decide where upon. Now, once I decide upon the terrain condition, I consider based on the topo sheet study, how is the terrain, whether I can go for the remote sensing technology, drone technology or GPR technology, whatever it depends on our purpose and the terrain condition and the level of information we need and the cost, many things we consider. Now we have have a different geo tools. How exactly we start and make use of this? Depending upon the geo tools where we operate and use, we have different platforms. What do we mean by platform? It is the place where from we start our activities operate. Now, we may have the platform located on the ground. It is a ground based observation and different devices we use. If I am operating at a certain height, I call it say low altitude, a different level of instrumental setup, activities, devices we use, etc. So, we have a ground based observations platforms, low altitude is another platform, high altitude, high altitude, we have different, it is I place my data gathering devices, survey instruments, survey equipment machines at a different and accordingly we have different platforms where from the data is captured, whether I am capturing the data standing in the ground, ground based observation. In the air, air based observation, aerial photographs like that. So, ground born terrestrial photogrammetry, it is a ground based observation. We have drone is air based. Aerial photogrammetry, it is a high altitude. Remote sensing, very high altitude, several thousands of kilometers. 7,000, 10,000 kilometers like that. So, depends on where exactly I mount my devices to record the observations, ground observations. We have different platforms. What is the sensor? Now, when my equipment is directly on the ground, I can directly see the object, I can capture the photograph. Photograph itself can be my data from which I can make. Now, when I mount my camera, it's a device I am going to use to capture. How I mount? I may mount the camera with the camera axis horizontal to the ground, the camera axis is horizontal. If my observation from the air, I keep the camera like this vertical to the ground, the camera axis is vertical to the ground. So, aerial photographs, I have even the camera may be slightly inclined, vertical, axis vertical, camera may be slightly tilted like this. Horizontal, if I keep, I do not capture anything on the ground. I capture that the space, that's all. Okay. Flight with the camera axis so horizontal, I am not able to capture anything about the ground. Either it has to be inclined or vertical. If it is inclined, I have certain limitations and it is a low angle or high angle. Very low angle also, I am 
not able to cover complete ground i may miss high angle or vertical is useful so now satellite data how exactly the camera i mount i wanted three dimension i have to have simultaneously observation from two different a camera but as the distance increases the optical system is not adequate not enough or not possible to completely capture the information i depend on some sensors what are those sensors we shall study depending on the platform whether i use optical camera or sensors now i have the option okay now we will come to the remote sensing what exactly the remote sensing satellite this is from here to here we go now from there what exactly the satellite it is a very device is placed in a very remote place say 5000 10000 20000 kilometer away from the earth my data gathering device is placed it is placed in a remote place remote from that i sense not directly i am able to observe or not able to touch on the ground i can observe i can touch but whereas from the space i cannot touch it is i have to sense so it is what is exactly remote sensing see i observe we are reading a book what is that the light fall on the book there are different symbols this is something symbol this is something symbol this is something symbol for us that's all yes it captures energy emitted from first incident from the sun fall on the book it is reflected our eye acts as a lens it captures sends into retina to mind where it is a processed central processing unit is nothing but our mind so there it is a processed what exactly this symbol means it is a yes like that so in all respect it is similar to that energy solar light is nothing but when light is not the torch we use it is nothing but an illumination system is nothing but an energy energy fall on the object energy reflected from the object it is captured by some device here it is eyes there we may have some instrument to capture that signals which is captured in an instrument is processed so we use a different energy system and that is nothing but the remote sensing what is that energy from the sun fall on the earth on the earth we have a different basically we have mainly vegetation soil and water body soil rock all this n number of categories even building what we call is also made up of earth material so we have vegetation basically the composition here we are talking rock soil building these are all have certain composition vegetation has some other composition we measure in terms of chlorophyll and water body again it has a different composition each one has a different characteristic feature that become the basis for us means energy reflected from a different bodies we capture that energy captured in our system sensors they sense they capture and based on that we are trying to understand different materials their pattern their distribution their characteristics on the ground that is nothing but a remote sensing friends we have the blue color the green color the red color different materials what is that blue 
it is in the atmosphere there are many atmospheric constituents dust particles water molecules etc and they have one kind of character they reflect blue therefore sky on the ground we have the vegetation they reflect green uh, if water body is there if we have vegetation they reflect red that is in a different energy spectrum they reflect so water bodies appear like this vegetation appears red sky appears like this we have different materials emit different colors or accordingly we are able to identify different features on the ground that is the basis for our remote sensing technology application now when my data gathering device is located far far remote place say 10000 km away from the ground optical system fail now i have to depend on electromagnetic that is the principle is if this is the wavelength the length wavelength their energy penetrating system differs wavelength is higher 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 their penetrating capacity is less 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 whereas wavelength is narrower less 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 their ability to penetrate through atmosphere is high now these are the optimum for us to understand the earth so we call that see near infrared to ultraviolet range whatever the that spectral characteristics we use in a remote sensing therefore these are the common color we get and that we process friends this is electromagnetic spectrum high penetrating ability and this spectrum or uh, spectral particular spectral range we try to capture the ground information for our observation for study so here we use this remember carefully now again i am showing what is that now just now i mentioned this spectral range we try to observe the earth features and sense them in a sensor what is that we have the sun and we have the sensor we have the satellite where we have placed our data collecting devices sensors they record they are sensitive instruments they are able to record them in a digital system okay. so what happens when earth sends its energy towards earth there are atmospheric constituents they are able to absorb the energy no energy transmitted at all every all that energy is absorbed by a body so if sun sent certain amount of energy not that all energy reaches the ground there are certain constituents they absorb energy there are some constituents depends on their for example there is a particle energy they are scattered reflected they are scattered they do not reach once again the ground only some energy can reaches the ground once the energy reaches the ground they reflect back again they reflect back to the same atmosphere there are some constituents they may absorb it so even from then we have absorption all that ref reflected energies also do not reach the sensors again there are some constituents they scatter them again only some energy reaches the sensor system this is the energy emitted by sun absorbed by atmospheric constituents 
scattered by atmosphere constituents and some energy reaches the ground from the ground again there is some energy reflected and reaches the sensor while some energy get absorbed by atmosphere constituents reflected by the body reflected but again they are scattered so we have so many complicated process to take place all that energy reflected from the earth is not received by the sensors again those how much energy reaches what happens those are very important in between because a material i may get very high energy that does not mean that or sometimes a low energy i receive what do i mean is that body reflected only low energy only some portion of the energy the body must have emitted but it all got scattered or absorbed by atmosphere sometimes although body emit or reflect higher level of energy only part of the energy reaches because of the this process if not absorbed all that energy may reaches that does not mean that body has emitted high energy whatever the energy it has reflected reached the sensor that's all it means i should be very careful whatever the energy i receive here i have to calibrate i have to process it for possible scattering effect absorption effect etc so it is complicated yes emission of electromagnetic radiation or emr this is the solar natural energy system that is reflected from the body of the earth transmission of energy sources to the surface of the earth as well as absorption scattering take place on the energy emitted from the sun interaction of emr with the earth surface reflection emission this energy once reaches the ground they interact with the earth material we have the soil we have the water body we have the vegetation they interact differently depends on their constituents example i have a soil rich in iron i have a soil not rich in iron example black cotton soil it is not rich in iron it is rich in calcium magnesium potassium i have morum lateritic soil which is red color rich in iron and silica they interact differently and that is very important for me based on that i am going to differentiate this is black cotton soil this is red soil etc or i have a rock called granite rock called basalt which have different iron and magnesium iron and magnesium is low in a granite high in basalt therefore i am able to distinguish now it depends on the level kind of interaction so depends on the interaction they emit or reflect we have studied they have ability to absorb ability to emit it depends on their composition water body on the other hand whatever the energy emitted on the water body all that energy they are able to absorb and no energy they leave it if no energy is reflected from the body the body looks dark water body looks dark on the other hand vegetation by virtue of their chlorophyll content they are able to absorb and reflect maximum energy in the infrared region of the this infrared region therefore vegetative cover looks dark uh, red yes therefore it become very easy for us sorry yes therefore we have set there are transmission of energy from the surface of the body and that is get uh, captured by sensor sensors if once they capture they are able to send it to the earth observation system we have a the data sent to the 
ground where this can be further processed and these data are again in a digital form they store it and they can supply and generate either digital data it is to be processed remember they generate this into the necessary format and they supply and that data we use process it and use to understand earth's surface features etc from that we try to understand the earth so data transmission from here to here and their analysis from that that data obtained by various user agencies he analyzes it he gives it to uh, user agency that is that example national remote sensing agency nrc we center they receive the data from there and they generate and those data are supplied to us whoever is interested he will process it a forest agency a geologist a oceanographer they have different agriculture use different depends on that they process as per their need and they supply i am interested in a geological observation say mineral deposit i process it in my style means a different approach i get a different signal and supply to it a vegetation forestry they have a different they are concerned with the vegetation and they process it and they send it to user agency differently example whether it is a arecanet coconut natural forest all looks red and how do they analyze it so it all look red but they process it different parameters and uh, all uh, constraints they apply limitations etc apply to color texture association many things which we discuss little later they apply and finally come to conclusion that this is a coconut plantation again within the coconut plantation coconut arecanut natural vegetation etc different again within the coconut once they say within that healthy coconuts and unhealthy coconuts again from level of reflection energy emitted by that body they are able to say this is the healthy plant unhealthy plant this is where a disease affected plant is there they are able to say depends on the purpose of application thus all that basis is the spectral energy we also call digital number so that is a digital number is nothing but the amount of energy reflected is represented by a number yes now there are different so far what is that sorry here sun is emitting energy whatever the energy reflected by it i am able to capture if there is no sun i am not able to capture my sun it is a dark place i am not able to capture anything what i do i use my torch i have my own energy i send my energy to the object whatever it reflects i capture it means i have a different type of remote sensing what is that source of energy is the sun naturally available if so long as sun is available he send the energy and body receive the energy reflects i am able to capture it this is a passive remote sensing solar energy reflected by the target of specific wavelength bands are recorded using sensor in order to ensure ample signal strength received at the sensor wavelength energy bands capable of traversing through the atmosphere without significant loss through atmosphere accordingly i select my energy band 
generally used in remote sensing. This is a kind of. Now, sorry, sorry. Yes. What is active remote sensing? Sources of energy. I have my own energy. I have a satellite. I have a torch like system. I send my energy. I have a receiver. I reflected energy. I capture. Means I use my own energy, my own torch, and then reflected energy I am able to capture. This is somewhat active, that is, energy reflected back from the targets are recorded using sensors on board. Okay. As a simple analogy, passive remote sensing is similar to taking a picture with an ordinary camera. Active remote sensing, a flash camera, I send their energy and get this because natural available energy may not be adequate or not available at all. And if I use my own light flash, it is somewhat similar. Means in active remote sensing, we use our own illumination, illumination system energy. Whereas in natural, whatever the available energy we capture, that is active and passive remote sensing. Now, where all this we can use, remote sensing data has n number of application in any field you call. Broadly, geology, people are interested in understanding what is the rock type, whether we have any mineral deposit anywhere. These are the interest of a geologist how the mountain, whether there is a fold, whether there is a fault, weakness in the rocks, all those things we try to understand that is a geology. He uses remote sensing data. Land use, land cover change in 20, 30, 50 years back, what was the land condition here? What is a land condition today? How much land modification took place? How exactly this land is being used? How, how much land is covered by what? Whether there is a forest cover, whether there is a urbanization, water body in 1960 or 80, how much was the area covered by water, today how much it is covered by water body, etc. All those things they make use. Land use, land cover, this is very important for some agency. Example, I give a small example. You appreciate, say for example, say in 1960, in 1960, 70, 80, 90, I have only, see, so 80 percent of the area was covered by a vegetation or a lake. In this year, this year, it decreased. In today, 2020, only this much area is occupied by a water body. What do I mean? There was a lake, there was a lake and it occupied only this much area. In 1960, it was occupied and in 2020, this much is occupied by water means this much land either occupied by people and it is not able to store that much of water, one possible message, or there must have been a decrease in the rainfall. Therefore, that much of water did not flow into the water body. So, water body did not spread that much. So, that is the meaning. So, either the water body is lost because of so many reasons. This can be a message. I can go now further, I can understand rainfall versus water body. Yes, high rainfall, water body was here, large area, low rainfall area, small water body. If there is a high rainfall again, but water body is only this much, higher the rainfall, it should spread more, but if it is not spreading more, means something has happened to the water body. Either land is occupied by people, therefore it is not able to store that much of water. 
it is leaving out the water somewhere. It means it is important for a manager authority how best he can make use of this. Agriculture, vast area, hundreds of thousands of acres they are owning and based on our government of India has to report say this year normal food yield, food grain yield. How do they? They survey remote sensing data they take from the chlorophyll mapping they say this year this much food grains are expected like this. Or thousands or hundreds of acres they every leaf I cannot go and check but in some part of my field some disease affected plants I have hundreds or thousands of acres I cannot go and check every corner but I can obtain satellite image and that satellite image immediately everywhere high energy high energy but in this part very low energy low digital number it means the body is not able to emit that level of energy. Why that is? Perhaps leaf is a dry, chlorophyll content, green, rich, emit high energy, high infrared. But very low energy, perhaps leaf is a dry. It is affected by some kind of disease. Plant is dying. So such kind of information in the agriculture food grains, what is the growth pattern, when I have to feed water to it, where exactly if something disease is affected and what is the likely food grains available, which part of the country, which kind of agriculture practice is being done, whether it is a plantation, paddies is something different, correct? So different kind in agriculture. Even the soil is very important for agriculture. What is the type of soil? Whether the soil has a moisture, a dry soil, no moisture content reflects higher energy. The same soil, if it has a moisture, it reflects little lesser energy, means dark color or low energy. The soil moisture I can map, that is very important in agriculture. So many things agriculture industrial agriculture field means sector requires this information that can be provided. Forestry, yes, what kind of forest? It is a natural forest, a vegetation or uh, socio forestry, all tick, 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 socio forestry, tick. Natural forest, western gods, every composition we have. Energy reflected by a particular body is a dif different. In the natural forest, all kinds of trees are there. They energy in different like this, high energy, low energy, high energy. If it is a say teak plantation, all they emit same level of energy. Pattern is different. So in a forestry, how much area is occupied? If there is a forest fire, where exactly it happened? Floods of forest damaged, where exactly it has damaged? Where forest is looted? All those things can be understood and forestry, department of forestry uses this where exactly forest plantation or forest development is required, where getting damaged, such information. Hydrology, floods, yes. Where exactly water available, yes. Where I can construct a dam, yes. Where groundwater occurs the possibility, yes. Everywhere remote sensing data provides an important input. Therefore, uh, people working in hydrology field also make use of remote sensing data extensively. Environmental studies, yes, if I have air is very clean. I have shown that word photograph. Yes, if air is clean, what happens? If air is highly polluted, what happens? If air is clean, energy can directly reach. Energy reaching the ground may be higher if it is a polluted atmosphere constituents, uh, water molecule, so many things, and they may scatter or reflect in energy. That can be one important interest. Air pollution level, I can. Aerosol studies people do.
if I am interested in water body, if pure water, pure water absorbs all that energy, water body looks dark. If water has a lot of suspended particle, say, suppose this is a water body, pure water, whatever the energy reaches, they completely absorb, they do not reflect energy sensor do not receive any energy. On the other end, if there is a lot of suspended particle in it, pollutants in it, pollutants there, different, I come to that point. If a lot of suspended particles are there, energy reaches, they reflect back. They behave similarly to the solid material, they reflect back, I am able to capture. Means so pure water, is dark, little suspended material, they emit, reflect some energy, sensor receives some energy, therefore depends on the energy received whether it is a pure water body or with a lot of suspended matter I am able to. Similarly, pure water body, it has some density, energy can penetrate easily. If I have a lot of heavy metal content in it, density of the water changes. What happens? So, then the energy reflected may be something different. Optical properties of the water is the function of its composition. I measure that one. Therefore, I am able to understand if water pollution, air pollution, similarly soil pollution, where satellite data I can use where solid waste is being dumped, where I have to dump which is the topography ideal to dump, all those kinds of information I can stud, study and understand using remote sensing data. Therefore, in the environmental studies, widely satellite ap image applications, so water resources, how much water is available, even including the cloud based on that, they infer this is the kind of rainfall coming three days, we have this rain. It is likely to rain. How? Based on the clouds. So, these are all, this year we do have normal rainfall, etc. How much water body in our reservoir? Whether the reservoir is full or what is the flow of the river? Whether water body is anywhere stored or polluted? How much water is available? What is the moisture content of the soil. Soil moisture and water resources are very important relationship. Example, suppose I have certain amount of rainfall. The soil is totally dry. What happens? First, certain amount of water is required to saturate the soil. If there is excess water, either it can percolate or it can flow. Correct? If soil is totally dry, good amount of water is required to saturate them. If on the other end, soil has certain level of moisture already, only little amount of water is enough to saturate them. More water is available either for flow or for percolation. Thus, ground water percolation to, into the ground or flow depends on the soil moisture. Initial soil moisture is very important for me. If this is the available rain, how much soil has got so much of moisture and how much of water is available for surface runoff or how much of water is available for percolation, I can estimate. These are all important information for water resources engineer where he has to construct a dam, etc. like many things, disaster management like floods forest fire, earthquake, cyclone, all these even post and estimation of the loss, prevention. Yes, we have so much of rain in the coming three days, this much of flow will be there, 
these, these are the area likely to get submerged. These many people are to be shifted to safe place like this. It's a kind of disaster management, cyclone during thousands of families have been shifted to safe place. We read, depends on the kind of the disaster going to occur, area, etc. And all these are inferred from the satellite image application. Yes, in disaster management, they are important. Natural resources, where is water, where is soil, where is mineral, these are all natural resources. Natural resource management is important. Mineral exploration, just now I have said, if I have a mineral called iron, it reflects some way. If I have a limestone, it reflects in different way. If I have a bauxite deposit, it reflects in different way. It all depends on the composition of the material. Bauxite is alumina rich, iron ore is iron rich, carbonate is calcium carbonate rich. They have different spectral characteristics and emit different levels of energy. Accordingly, I am able to distinguish different minerals. So, soil resources, just now we have mentioned black cotton or dark, uh, red soil, etc. Yes, climate change studies. 30 years back, what was the climate? What is today? I do not get it directly. Indirectly, I survey the vegetation. I survey the water bodies based on this or soil moisture, etc. 30 years back and what is today? This is change will help me to understand the climate change effect. How exactly? There are many things, even urbanization can change. I select an area where no urbanization has taken place, no urbanization, anthropogenic activity. But 30 years back here, what was the vegetation today? What is the vegetation? Why vegetation lost? There is no water available in the soil, vegetation do not thrive. Or 30 years back, the soil moisture content was that much. Today, it is soil moisture content is this much. Soil property lost, perhaps no moisture content in the soil. 30 years back, this was the water body spread. Now, water body spread is very less. Why? Anthropogenic activities have not affected. Still, there is a less storage, less spread, climate change. Or if there is more forest growth, more lake body coverage, more soil moisture content, all these are example of indication of climate change. Thus, there also we extensively use satellite image. Friends, there is no field where satellite data is not used today. Urbanization, transport, a smart city, everywhere we use. See, remote sensing observation provides data on the Earth's resources in a spatial format, wherever, whatever the kind of information we need. Terrain, morphological condition, hill, plain region, the engineers develop a layout, etc. There they find geology, hydrology just now, drainage pattern just now we have said artificial recharge, what kind of vegetation, uh, uh, rain or drainage pattern is uh, helpful, what kind of bunds or spreading method, we know spreading method is wherever the drainage is a dendritic, wherever drainage is structurally controlled nala bond like that we have planned hope you remember thus drainage land use and so on depends on the type of the terrain type of the soil cover we decide the land suitability this land is suitable for paddy this land is suitable for uh, arecanet or uh, like that different type of land suitability for its application or this land is suitable for a layout, perfect plain land like that, attractive. Mountainous terrain, a kind of a different land use plan we have to do this and so on. 
So, remote sensing has become a potential and indispensable tool for solving many problems in civil engineering. We have the environmental issues, we have safety, dam like, tunnel like, road project, everywhere we have to use, we have to construct a road across this hill, what is that? The only option is like this, all that a plan I do sitting in my office based on the remote sensing data I have, because my approach points are here. This is one, this is one. I have to reach. I in between I have a hilly area, urbanization. How to reach? Either tunnel or something like that. So I use. It means water resources, construction, layout, dam, tunnel, bridge, whatever you say, remote sensing data finds application in civil engineering. In urbanization and transportation, remote sensing data is used for updating the roads, and the progress of the work, deletion of the wetland, n number of fields, you name any field, remote sensing data finds application. Therefore, should we not learn this little more detail? Yes. In agriculture, crop health analysis, crop yield estimation, it is used. It is also used for national security like targeting. China, uh, Indian soldiers, few days back we had, these are all being captured by people sitting here, see in China, people are coming to our border like that. It is frequently monitored by satellite and that is used targeting and disaster mapping. Yes, just know how much area is lost by uh, forest or so fire or like uh, floods like damaged. Navigation, yes, where exactly, how, so telecommunication, coastal mapping, everywhere satellite data is used. So, what is the advantage? These are the area where we can make use of satellite. But what is the advantage of this? It provides data of large area. If I have the platform here, here, here. If I have a platform, this much area I cover. If the platform here, if platform here, this much area. If the platform here, this much area. As the area platform higher, higher, higher level, the area captured will be higher, 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 higher. It means if I have to cover a small area, Maybe drone is enough, but if I have to capture thousands of square kilometer, drone may become costly. Remote sensing data, if I have here, this much of data I can cover. See, the area coverage increases with the altitude of the platform. So, remote sensing data is the highest platform. Then we have satellite image. Then we have this a uh, drone. Therefore, now you imagine how much area we can cover. Therefore, if large area, I get a synoptic view of that area. And hence, although my project area is here, adjacent within 100 kilometer, 10 kilometer, 50 kilometer, if anything is happening, I can understand. It means this is the landslide that occurred in the Kadwad. This was the railway track and this was a lineament when railway line, railway pa passage of train, railway line intersects the lineament. Here landslides have occurred. These are all 30, 40 kilometer away, but they are connected. But I do not understand if landslide has occurred here, how I am connected with train or lineament, etc. If I have to understand, integrate, take management, efficient management plan, I need to study, I just study this area alone is not adequate. I have to study hundreds of kilometers around that. Hundreds of kilometers away from the ground, some explosion in the deep water, some 
uh, our defense, they conduct some experiments, some explosion blast take place, high waves are generated, but the land area is affected, all these things can be, all these possible if we have a remote sensing data, even 100, 1000 kilometer away something happening, we will able to. Satellite data help us to understand years in 100 kilometer, 200, 500 kilometer away from the land, there is a low pressure zone developed and we have rain or cyclone effect, etc. Yes, able to obtain image of any area in a continuous period of time through which any anthropogenic natural changes. If 1980 to 2020, every year I can monitor and I get the information about the ground and therefore I can just hence able to understand the change due to anthropogenic activities over a ground from here to here like this, what here is here like this, heavy rain has occurred here, here affected, here affected, here affected, any spatial change, temporal change 1980, 19. Uh, 90, 200, 220, what has happened in the same area over different years, this kind of information also temporal scale changes in the landscape or anything is possible to monitor through help of remote sensing. Relatively inexpensive when compared to a large area in one shot I get this much of information, large area, the same with very a small area, cost comparable but large information I get. So easy and rapid collection of data in one stretch whether I get the data, the same data can be used by forestry, agriculture, civil engineers, uh, mineral wealth. One satellite data you provide, a different person is interested and he can process it, the same basic satellite image. But application vary, means the same data per serves purpose of several people, means several discipline. An environmental engineer can also make use of that satellite image, the same satellite image. A geologist is interested in mineral exploration, the same satellite data, agriculture interest. Forestry department, yes, it means very easy and rapid collection of data to serve many population, many uh, discipline, rapid production of maps for interpretation. Yes, in one stretch, thousands of square kilometer, I can prepare map and provide data, whereas by other conventional survey, not possible, time consuming. Yes. Friends, I have said the advantages and application, but there are limitations as well. I have to remember in mind what are the constraints I have while applying. Remote sensing data is expensive to collect. It is not that easy as I say. I do not have my own satellite. I have to have a satellite to collect. That itself is very costly. Ground survey, I have only one or limited instruments I can go and survey. Yes, compared to ground-based observation, satellite image generation of data is very expensive. And it's the analysis is also, I need to have a software, I have to have. So interpretation of imagery requires certain skill level. Every man cannot understand what is satellite image. A skilled and a trained person is required. Non-calibrated instrument result in the field data. Whether the instrument is giving correct result, I have to calibrate properly. Possibility. I do not know which kind of instrument where they have used. So data from multiple sources may create a confusion. Satellite derived data, if I compare with some other, I may have confusion, but there is a possibility to overcome it easy, no problem. Objects may be misclassified or confused. Possibility is there, especially in a forest like or mineral like 
there is a possibility of this. Distortion may occur in an image due to relative motion of sensor and source. There is a, some kind of a distortion is possible. Cloud cover is one possibility. I have the end, but there is a cloud cover, energy do not reach us at certain level of energy and in the, the same object, cloud free, I get a different energy level possible, yes. These are all some possible effects. So, I have to be careful, this kind of confusion may really result in some kind of problems. Yes, we know the limitation. Now, what exactly this I have to understand, what kind of satellite data I am going to use. Now, based on the kind of satellite movement and their altitude, we have different geostationary satellites, geostationary orbits. What exactly you mean? The altitude height is approximately 36,000 kilometer away from the earth. That is one. Plane of orbit is equatorial. They round like this. They revolve at a speed which matches with the rotation of the earth means at any given point of time, if there is a satellite, if it is focusing on this object and earth rotates, this also rotates in the same speed, also rotates in the same speed, means when this point comes here, this point comes here. So, earth and the satellite rotates in the same speed, in the same direction, therefore, there is no relative movement between the earth and the satellite and a satellite appears to be stationary for person observing from the land. At the same time, a person sitting in the satellite, nobody sitting, of course, an instrument. It, if at all person or instrument, they feel earth is stationary. There is no relative movement between the satellite and the earth. Therefore, stationary, geostationary. There was same speed as that of the earth in the same direction. Therefore, there is no relative movement. Hence, at any given point of time, satellite observe the same point. Hence, view the same portion of the earth. One satellite can view one third and therefore, how to cover the earth? Friends, suppose this is the earth, minimum three satellites are required, minimum three. This satellite is able to capture one third of the earth's surface. This satellite is also able to capture one third, this able to capture one third. It means three satellites together able to cover complete earth scan. Plus, this satellite is able to communicate with this satellite this satellite is able to communicate. There is an exchange of information. Similarly, this satellite and this satellite, this satellite and this satellite. It means there is exchange of information among those. Therefore, although this satellite has captured only one third, the other one third captured by this satellite and this one third captured by this satellite is available for this. This can send information to the ground. Therefore, now I am able to scan the entire earth in a given time and this is a real time. That is real time means this information is exchanged, the energy travels in the light speed, speed of light we know as good as a satellite. Therefore, even the football match has happening somewhere here or Olympic happening here in some other parts of the globe, we are able to see it here. The event is taking place here, I am able to hear, able to see because this is captured by this satellite, it is transmitted, this satellite is able to send this information to the ground. All this take place in the light speed. Therefore, 
real time i am able to see how exactly olympic when exactly a runner crosses the target line like that so we are able to see this is functioning in geostationary and this is useful in communication and rarely in earth resources mapping or earth resources etc rarely so one third one satellite can view one third of the globe these satellites are used for communication for my mobile i am able to call my friends or whoever wherever they are friends although we say minimum three satellites as many satellites as possible is wonderful it gives more accurate yes more information therefore there are we have good number of satellites but minimum three is required okay what is sun synchronous orbit generally these fly at a means satellites instruments this is at a high altitude of 600 to 800 km above the earth so that is 36000 this is 600 plane of the orbit is not to south if this is the earth this was the geostationary this is not to south not to south not to south or like this the plane of orbit is is not to south a satellite in this orbit covers each area of the world at a constant time of the day tomorrow if today it is 12 o'clock tomorrow also 12 o'clock tomorrow also 12 o'clock day after tomorrow also 12 o'clock same time of the day it capture the same area therefore we use this kind of information for this satellite to understand the earth's surface process features and that is important cover the area of the world at the same time and hence i can use this to understand change yesterday 12 o'clock what happened today today 12 o'clock what happened that kind of information this ensures similar illumination yesterday 12 o'clock today 12 o'clock sun energy reaching the earth surface is more or less same therefore uniform illumination condition this is very important this satellite travel from north to south just now we said on one side the sun side of the earth this is the descending path of the satellite while ascending path of the satellite travel from south to north and it is the shadow area when coming here illumination is shadow area this is happening therefore i have to remember this and once we know this all pattern then i start with my data collection and then how i process it we shall study them friends so far we have understood some principles their application technology involved now how exactly we use that data for our purpose and little more details are necessary we keeping in that mind we go ahead